Hello, you're watching Every TV. Welcome to English News Broadcast. These are the top stories. Seventy-six patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests carried out today. Ambassador Sal Homer conducts seminar to Eritrean nationals in Johannesburg. The global COVID-19 cases and death toll continue to rise. And dozens of children, mostly girls, abducted by Mozambique fighters. The local news. We have an announcement from the Ministry of Health. 76 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today at quarantine centers in Central, Southern and Ansevar regions. Out of this, 68 patients are from quarantine centers in Asmara Central region. Seven patients are from quarantine center in Mendefara, Southern region. The last patient is from quarantine center in Karen, Ansevar region. On the other hand, 46 patients will be receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the Northern Red Sea, 26 Central, 19 and Ansevar 1 regions have fully recovered and have been discharged from these facilities. Unfortunately, a 43-year-old male patient in Dekmahara, Southern region, and a 60-year-old female patient in Asmara Center region have passed away due to the pandemic. The total number of recovered patients to date has accordingly risen to 4,252, while the number of deaths has increased to 16. And the total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has also risen to 4,766. Ministry of Health, Asmara, June 10, 2021. The Eritrean Ambassador to the Republic of South Africa and South African countries, Mr. Saleh Omar, conducted seminar to nationals residing in Johannesburg and its environs. At the seminar, Ambassador Saleh gave extensive briefing on the objective situation in the homeland and the region, stating that the Eritrean government is tirelessly working for mutual peace, cooperation and development in the Horn of Africa. Ambassador Saleh said, despite all of the challenges, Eritrea will emerge victorious in all its endeavors. Ambassador Seller also said that colorful celebrations of the Eritrean people all over the world conducted in connection with the 30th Independence Day anniversary attested their unity and love of the country and called for its sustainability. The ambassador also said that the celebrations have also significant contribution in portraying the true image of Eritrea and is exposing the lies and defamation being perpetrated against Eritrea. He finally gave answers to questions raised by the participants. The dams renovated at a cost of over 250 million Nakfa in the central region are dramatically contributing in reaching the underground water and the development of agricultural activities. According to head of agricultural infrastructure in the region, engineer Abraham Daniel said the construction of the dams in the central region has long history and that from 1914 to 1930 about 11 dams have been constructed to supply potable water to Asmara residents and currently there are 84 dams and 42 micro dams in the region. Stating that 36 dams and 21 micro dams have been constructed and 16 dams have been renovated in the past 30 years of independence, engineer Abraham said irrigation farming that was conducted on 230 hectares of land in 1992 has increased to about 2,000 hectares to date and that attests to the contribution of the dams and the development of irrigation farming. Engineer Abraham also said that the residents of the various administrative areas in the region are conducting sustainable water and soil conservation activities, including construction of terraces and water catchment schemes with a view to boost agricultural productivity. Zara Textile Factory that is owned by Italian investors is exerting effort to increase production both in quality and quantity with a view to satisfy market demand. According to Ms. Daniela Johannes, manager of the factory, the factory produces 2,000 shirts, 650 trousers, as well as 800 various clothes on a daily basis. Ms. Daniela also said that with the prevalence of COVID-19 pandemic, the factory has produced over 2,500 masks for local use. I pointing out that the factory has created job opportunity to 550 nationals, the manager said the factory has 4,500 customer shops across the world and that is exerting effort to satisfy their demands. Ms. Daniela also said that the factory has established kindergarten with a view to create conducive atmosphere for mothers working in the factory and covers school expenses to over 80 children or families working in the factory. 
Zara Textile Factory was provide, privatized in 2004 to Italian investors. And now back to the international news after a short break. Welcome back. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally surpassed 175 million today, with the death toll exceeding 3.7 million. And the number of recovered patients has exceeded 159 million, this according to media reports. India has reported its highest ever single-day death toll from COVID-19, 6,148 deaths after an eastern state sharply raised its figures to account for people who have been treated at home or in private hospitals. The Health Department of Bihar, one of India's poorest states, revised its total COVID-19 deaths toll to more than 9,400 from about 5,400. Regarding COVID-19 vaccine, the Biden administration plans to donate 500 million Pfizer coronavirus vaccine doses to about 100 countries over the next two years. This is according to a person familiar with the matter. The United States will purchase 200 million shots this year and 300 million in the first half of next year. It will donate them to 92 lower income countries and the African Union. Fighters in conflict hit northern Mozambique abducted dozens of children during raids in 2020, according to a new analysis by Save the Children. The charity said in the, that the abduction of children has become a new and alarmingly regular tactic by armed groups in Cabago de Gallo province, where worsening fighting over the past three and a half years has killed nearly 3,000 people and displaced more than 700,000, half of whom are children. Save the Children said at least 51 children, most of them girls, were seized off non-state armed groups in the region last year, adding that the number involved were likely far higher than its estimates, which were based on data collected by the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project that reflected only reported cases. It warned that the victims are at risk of sexual violence, early marriage, and being used as fighters in the conflict. Israeli air attacks struck central Syria with the reports of explosions in Damascus before adding that its air defenses had been activated against the Israeli attacks. At least seven armed soldiers and four National Defense Forces militia men were killed, this according to Sohar Chief Rami Abdul Rahman. Israeli planes arrived from Lebanese airspace. It did not mention any reports of casualties or damage, but the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said at least eight pro-government fighters were killed in the attack that took place yesterday. The Britain-based war monitor said the attacks targeted air force positions near the village of Kibirti Altini on the outskirts of Homs, as well as on the arms depot belonging to the Lebanese Hezbollah movement. That's the news for today, and now let's remind you the top stories. Six patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and test carried out today. Ambassador Saleh Omar conducts seminar to Eritrean nationals in Johannesburg. The global COVID-19 case and death toll continue to rise. And Dozens of children, mostly girls, abducted by Mozambique fighters.